A very good afternoon to you and welcome to the news at 1 p.m. on NTA Channel 5 Abuja, the Unity Station. I am Nolin Abel Ame. We begin the news with security. A crucial meeting of the National Security Council is underway at the presidential villa. President Muhammad Buhari summoned the meeting following suggestions received from the last Council of State meeting. Far-reaching and decisive measures are expected to be taken against the resurgence of violent attacks in parts of the country by criminal elements. This is aimed at achieving lasting peace, stability and public order in the country. In attendance at the meeting are Vice President Yemi Oshibaju, Ministers of Defense, Interior and Foreign, Minister, Foreign Affairs and the National Security Advisor. Also at the meeting are the service chiefs, inspector general of police, as well as heads of other security services. The meeting is taking place behind closed doors. And still uh, talking security, the FCT Police Command says it will sustain the heat on every element of crime in the nation's capital space to restore confidence and security in the territory. This it is demonstrated through the Commissioner of Police Night Patrol operations currently ongoing. Correspondent Onotsu Yakubu has been monitoring the operations. This time, the Kompol Night Patrol operation went through Abuja Northeast, covering Kabusa, Apogudo, Durumi, and Galadimawa axes. Area Commander Karu, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Philomena Lawrence, commands the operation with DPOs from the areas of responsibility supporting. The operation is targeted at closing the space on crime and criminality, as well as mopping up elements that may be caught right in the act. Um, Apo is a very large area. Kabusa and Galadimawa, the areas we have patrolled. We know the type of crimes that are prevalent in these places and with the exercise of the early, late hours of the night and the early hours of this morning you you were with us you could see how serene how quiet because they know that we have come out we are after them they cannot continue to make the inhabitants of these areas uncomfortable. We have decided to make them uncomfortable. The hinterlands of the target communities felt the presence of the team with surprise visits to pin down spots to boost the morale of patrol teams. We have come out. We are after them. They cannot continue to make the inhabitants of these areas uncomfortable. We have decided to make them uncomfortable. So it's either they change their ways of life or they leave Abuja completely. Since their birds have learned to fly without perching, our hunters will perfect shooting without missing. This was the analogy the area commander used to affirm the police resolve to sustain the tempo of the operation against criminals in the FCT. Onotu Yakobo. NCA News. And talking of safety now, 25 officers of the Federal Road Safety Corps FCT Command have been decorated with their new ranks. Odiri Arutere reports that the FRSC Zonal Commander for FCT and Niger State, Shehu Mohammed, presided over the ceremony. <laughs> This time the command is decorating one deputy corps commander, three assistant corps commander, four chief root commander, and five superintendent root commander, as well as 11 root commander. Honestly, I feel very, very happy and glad because uh, it truly shows that hard work pays. The ceremony comes up yearly after promotion exercise. The Zona Commander for FCT and Niger State, Assistant Corps Marshal Shewu Mohammed, and FCT Sector Commander Oga Samuel Ochi charge newly decorated officers to carry out their duties 
diligently. Promotion counts because of dedication to duty and loyalty. And therefore, it is expected that the promoter officers will bring in their best uh, to make FRC succeed. I have high expectation of them in the sense that I know them quite well. And I know that they have performed for this number of years excellently. So I believe strongly that there are new responsibilities that will be given to them. They are going to perform better than what they have done in the past. I'm very happy with the entire special measures in FCT. Why? Because uh, our, our personnel, the regular officers, uh, were compensated for a job well done. Representatives from sister agencies like the police, NSCDC, DSS, among others, were in attendance in Abuja, Odiri, Arutere, and TA News. Meanwhile, henceforth, rickety cars will not be allowed to ply FCT routes. The sector commander, Ochioga Samuel, says the command is removing the vehicles from the routes. Sophia Uche has more. What is the definition of a rickety car from the perspective of a road safety officer? A rickety vehicle is a vehicle simply described as not roadworthy. We have three components of a vehicle. We have the body, the engine, and the system, the various system, braking system, and all that. That is essentially what makes up a vehicle. So if we now look at these three components of the vehicle, we can consider if that vehicle is rickety, not roadworthy. The sight of rickety cars often puts off other road users. The Federal Road Safety Corps Sector Commander Oga Samuel Ochi says removing them will reduce avoidable road crashes. It is a mandate you know, that those rickety vehicles, you must remember that uh, the, the primary reason for taking them off the road is to prevent road traffic crash. We are not being biased here. We are not looking at who has this vehicle, but we are looking at the consequence of having these vehicles on the road. Apart from them being risky and prone to accidents, some are usually seen overloaded with goods. All these vehicles that are used for these categories of goods are still supposed to attain some specific standards. You know, yes, use, using these vehicles to carry goods, carry food, food stuff, nothing is wrong with that, but the condition of the vehicle makes a lot of difference. Sector commander advised motorists to have good maintenance culture and keep their vehicles motorable. Sophia Uchi, NTA News. In other news, work on the Ushafa Jere Dual Carriage Way project has reached an advanced stage on, of completion. Onuze Akubu, who was part of the inspection tour of the project, brought back this situation report. The 42-kilometer Ushafa Jere Dual Carriage Way Road project is an alternative route from Abuja to Kaduna State. The project, solely funded by the FCT administration, is more than 80% completed, with a large portion of the route already asphalted with drains and solar-powered streetlight. Work is presently ongoing at the Buali Township end, after all encumbrances have been resolved with the residents of the community. We have about five river bridges, uh, which as at present now, all the five bridges are completed. Uh, and uh, we have several of uh, box culverts, you know, access culverts, you know, throughout uh, the length of this road. In an interview, Director of Engineering Services, Federal Capital Development Authority, Ferdinand Obiora Ezoha, speaks on the scope of work of the project and its economic benefits to the people. The administration saw the need to dualize it because of the increase in, in, the, in the traffic on that road. As of now, if you watch one length, one side is almost on asphalt from uh, Ushafa down to Jere, except for the area within uh, uh, Buari where we had encroachments. But recently the encroachments have been removed and the, and the works are ongoing there. 
The remaining uh, scope of work is predominantly just to overlay because part of existing road which we have uh, of the existing road, so a part will be removed, the areas that have faith and we'll work on the, uh, on the pavement before relaying, while some part we just do asphalt overlay on top. He further hinted that the project is expected to be completed before the end of the present administration. Onuze Yakubu, NT News. To ease the feeding of no fewer than 125,000 school children, the Federal Capital Territory Administration has dialogue with food vendors, aggregators, relevant stakeholders, and the Office of the National Homegrown School Feeding Program of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, the interactive session, which held at the LEA Primary School in Jabi, was in response to the growing complaints from food vendors. Ifai Ezumba reports. The complaints from some food vendors revolved around money and menu given to them. The FCT Focal Person Social Investment Program, Chingwendo Ete and Amba, notes that the program started in the FCT with feeding of more than 80,000 children. The program is really meeting up the target because you can see there's the enrollment of um, school children in the FCT. We have more children now in school because of this program. And also we, we are promoting agriculture and we are employing um, um, more cooks. That is financial inclusion, making sure that those women in the rural areas are being um, captured in this program. National Coordinator, Homegrown School Feeding, Zainab Abubakar, who represented the Minister of Humanitarian, Disaster Management and Social Development, assured that payment of the approved increased package will soon commence. I can't give a particular date, but we are hopeful once we finish working on the modalities and the process, the 100 naira will take into effect. But again, the 100 naira, you know, just like the 70 naira per child, that money is split between the aggregators and the cooks. The aggregators are the people that for FCT supply egg, beef, and Tom Brown. The program, which kicked off in 2019, targeted increasing enrollment and nutritional value of pupils in public schools, as well as empowering the downtrodden as a strategic survival venture. They are going to become and be matured when they want to undo uh, issues. They should not listen to rumor and whatever. Whatever they hear, and that is why we have other officers. We call them DEX officers, so, uh, money, uh, social mobilization officers, uh, uh, secretaries who are close to them at the grassroots to always complain to them. What I got to understand is, it's just a matter of English. It has been approved, not implemented, and that was what some vendors were not able to get. Luckily, towards the end, we were able to understand. So hopefully, maybe if we are lucky enough, in the next payment, we might see changes. Some of the vendors who commended government for the school feeding program advocated more regular interactive session. They also appealed for an improved funds disbursement. In Abuja, Ifani, Isumba, and Tinis. The FCT Police Command has commenced a special operation in the, uh, to clear out the territory's boundaries of remnants of bandits and kidnappers in the forest and uh, to as well reinforce confidence across the affected areas. Our correspondent uh, Onotu Yakubu is tracking the ongoing exercise. He's joining us live now from an operational base. Hello, Onotu. Hello, Nalin. Good afternoon. Hi, Onotu. If you can hear me, where are you at the moment? Which yeah. of the forests are you? Um, thank you. I can hear you very loud and clear. Presently, as I speak, I, behind me, you will see operatives of the FCT Police Command, um, practically forest at um, Yangoji Axis, I mean, in Kuali area. Um, the operative was launched this morning. So, it, like you rightly mentioned earlier, is to clear out remnants of bandits that have made this a safe haven for themselves, where residents, especially travelers, have been cooperate with their activities. Um, as at this moment, um, when, when the operation was launched at the FCT command, before uh, receiving address from um, the management 
department of the deputy commissioner of police Operation, operations bennett Igwe, who who addressed the operatives told them that the fct management of the fct police command as well as the fct administration the police high command at the fortress are rightly behind them and the essence is to ensure that you know they go in there in full force in fact that it is actually an all-out parade out parade to take right into the enclaves of um, the negative elements and that is what um, they have commenced this morning when yangoji and the operation like um the the, the red is that it is going to cover the entirety of course and it's also on, an ongoing operation across the fct if you also recall that um recently over the last couple of days, there's been this um, um commissioner of police night patrol that was launched where the area commanders are leading dpos on that, their responsibilities to, you know, more poor criminals that are taking over the city, you know, operating city center. Of course, this is also part of that special operation, and this is targeted to um, play out the. So, as you know, FCT is bound by at least like um, uh, six states of the North Central. Earlier in the year, there was the launch on Safe G7, which also. Um, went into the forest to to mop up all these um, all these negative elements. So this is a follow up to that initiative, and the essence is to make ensure the FCT in the center, both in the city centre and even outside the city centre, are safe. All right, uh, Onotsu, can you brief us on the success recorded so far from this operation? Yes, um, like I told you, the operation was launched this morning. As when we left, when we left the city, while um, decision was made that I I go them to track the the activities of the operatives in the forest, um, they came to some of the villages road through. In fact, initially they started from um, the um, Kuje access through Guagualada, and then to come to the operational base where operatives will be will be majorly operating from in the next couple of days and um, weeks to come and what they did was um, come in to strategically map out and then um, devise means and make and making deployments so so far the operation started this morning and as of this afternoon we're already in Kuali and as I'm talking to you behind me you see a hilly terrain and one thing that is very very um, important tradition ongoing right now is the fact that hunters are very hunters and vigilantes are very critical members of this operation and the essence of it of course you know is to bring their because of the hilly and um, terrible nature of the terrain it's to bring their own edge of, of as people who operate within this i mean in this bush in bushes and forests bring their knowledge of um, the terrain to bear as to you know driving the success of the operation but um i have behind me all right, uh, thank Deputy you so much, Onotsu, uh, for briefing us on what is happening there. Wish you success in your operations over there. Okay, moving on. You are still watching NTA Channel 5 News at 1 p.m. We will be back after this message. Stay with us. NTA Channel 5, Abuja. We are everywhere in the Federal Capital Territory and beyond. From Amak, Abaji, Gogwalada, Kuje, Buari, and Kwali Area Councils. Stay with us, the Unity Station. Thank you for staying with us on the news at 1 p.m. A youth and women organization under the auspices of the PDP New Generation is strategizing to get more women and youth to actively participate in politics. Ifo Maujinta reports on the press conference of the group where youth and women were enjoined to talk the talk and walk the work. 
The PDP New Generation is an organization under the umbrella of the People's Democratic Party. The time has come as a new generation to prepare ourselves to take over from the older generation. So this is just a platform created to, for youth to network and um, participate in active politics. The group says the People's Democratic Party of today is a rebranded organization with an ideology of one and a united Nigeria. The PDP New Generation, which is providing a platform under the PDP for youths and women to network and participate in politics, enjoins all to take the first step by obtaining their permanent voter cards. Youths should also um, get their um, PVCs um, because it's time, it's, it's, it, the time has come to talk the talk and walk the walk. It's a sin to continue ranting on social media without getting involved in the political process because the only way you can have a platform to, to make a change in this country is through a political platform. So Audu Mahmoud noted further that Nigeria will be better if youths and women take their rightful place on the table where issues of Nigeria's future are discussed and negotiated. Ifoma Ojinta, NT News. Three siblings have been reported missing from their home at the National Defense College Camp Ushafa in Bari Area Council of the FCT. Their father, Warrant Officer Medugu Salisu, is appealing to the public to support in search for his missing children. Hadiza Godwin Ebune has met. Monday, 11th of April, 2022, was like every other day for Warrant Officer Medugo Salisu as he went about his so daily activities. In the house. His wife, a working I mother, also left for work, leaving five after. children at home. After work, the parents returned home and discovered three children had gone missing. When we came back from the market around 8.30 in the evening, I discovered no bodies in the house. The house was empty, the door was open down. I said, oh, what happened? Where are those children? Where are they? I even thought that they were doing hide and seek for me. I didn't see them till the two children from the stepmother. My neighbor took them along and brought them to me. That he saw those two crying and she discovered that there is nobody in the house. That is why he kept the five years from the stepmother and the nine month old baby. Warrant Officer Sally Suicide is yet to receive any report or information from any quarter concerning the whereabouts of his children, a situation it describes as worrisome. Immediately I had this, me, my BP rise, I could not sleep presently, I don't know where they are. And what is even bothering me is concerning their education. Victoria Idris is the eldest and she is 16 years old in SS3. Precious Idris is 14 in SS2, while Israel Idris is 10 years old in GSS1. He appeals that anyone with useful information concerning the whereabouts should please contact the police on 070-6682-8413. Hadiza Ebune, NC News. And talking sports now, it will be complete fireworks in Benin City as 16 Nigerian Women Football League nationwide clubs will launch battle in the third tier of the Women's Football League as Manchester City are back to the Premier League table with 77 points. Details of this and more on Sports Brief with Miriam Amadi. <laughs> The Nigerian Women's Football League nationwide battle will be for two available promotion tickets to play in NWFL Championship. The 2021-2022 NWFL Nationwide will kick off on April 23 and 16 clubs that have been divided into four groups, four teams each. Meanwhile, an 82nd minute penalty kick converted by substitute Musa Wakili, an earlier strike by Shegwa Libyosu on 34 minutes which sandwiched Kenichukwago equalizer on 55 minutes, helped home side Niger Tornadoes FC stop visiting Rangers International FC 2-1 in a match day 24 MPFL 2021-2022 fixture. 
elsewhere. Manchester City regained their one-point lead at the top of the Premier League with a 3-0 win over Bryson and host Albion, while Arsenal upset London rival Chelsea with a 4-2 victory at Stamford Bridge on Wednesday. In tennis, 20-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic has criticized the decision to ban Russian Belarusian players from competing at Wimbledon this year, calling them both crazy. We sports brief, Miriam Amadi, NTA News. The sports brief concludes the news at 1 p.m. on NTA Channel 5 Abuja. Thank you for watching and uh, do join us for more news at 7 p.m. Stay safe and be vigilant. I am Nolene Ebelani.